Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate, and welcome back to another weather forecast discussion, this time for March 24th, 2022. Of course, if you are watching this not on the 24th or past the time period of March 31st, then I would highly recommend going to my channel and trying to find more recent content so that you guys may be able to stay up to date with the more recent weather activity. So after the huge severe weather outbreak and a multi-day tornado outbreak, if I may say, we're now trying to see what could potentially happen further and further into the severe weather season. We got a bit of a rude awakening here with our multi-day severe weather outbreak. And if we actually take a look over here real quickly, this is a really cool graphic that I have retweeted over on my Twitter from Evan Fisher. This shows you all the different tornado warnings that have been issued from the National Weather Service, as well as what risk area they were. One out of five on the severe weather scale in green, two out of five in yellow, three out of five in orange, and four out of five in red and we had quite the amount of tornado warnings here over the past three days 150 in total and uh, we covered all that with three of our live streams over the past three days including showing a couple of tornadoes that our chaser caught as well if you want to look back and watch those live streams please be sure to do so links to all of those live streams will be in the description down below but what about what could potentially happen in the future what could we try and forecast here with our next weather event well, let's take a look with our future radar on the North American model. The timing is above me in Eastern, and you can see that our short and you can see that our original line of showers and thunderstorms are now starting to move off of the East Coast and then areas near the low pressure system, which is up here along southern Ontario, southeastern Ontario, does have some more activity here in regards to the winter department. Look at that, some snow for portions of Ontario and Quebec. Specifically, a lot of areas in Quebec could get a lot of snow and then potentially another low pressure system coming on through with more snow behind that in some of the Canadian prairies too. So watch out for that. We'll play this on through and see what exactly happens. Well, there's some of your snow that we're talking about. You can see how that really becomes expansive across portions of Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, as well as areas in Ontario and Newfoundland. And that'll just continue to be pretty much widespread across much of those areas. Even some additional flurries and higher elevations back towards Ontario, the Great Lakes, and even portions of the Ohio River Valley and the Appalachians. And so there's quite a lot of stuff over here that continues to linger. A lot of cold air that surges in behind this. And this is expected to continue to move on through and linger all the way until about Monday morning. So definitely something to monitor with that. But... On the other hand, you can see how for much of the rest of the United States is uh, pretty much in the clear for the most part. Look at this. Nothing happens except for the Pacific Northwest areas near Vancouver, British Columbia, as well as areas in Washington and Oregon continue to get a little bit of precipitation every now and then. And then stuff starts to uptick from Sunday night into Monday morning, especially with areas further down south into California as well. And that is where our next system is starting to move on through. But before we get into what that potential next system could be, if you guys are enjoying the content so far, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to stay up to date with all the latest information that I will be providing on this channel, especially as we continue to get more and more into severe weather season. The activity and the chances for tornadoes will more than likely increase, and that is what we are here for. We are going to continue to try and get information out to you all so that you may all be prepared and know when these storms are moving on through. And we will even do some live streams for some of those storms like we have done in the past. So continue to stay up to date with this channel. Also, please be sure to hit that like button down below because that actually helps me get this video out to more and more people on YouTube. And copy the link to this video and share it with friends and family on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, so that we can continue to try and get the word out to people who could be potentially impacted by this next system. But let's talk about that next system here. And in order to do so, we have to take a look at the 500 millibar wind shear, which is about six kilometers above ground level. This gives us a general idea as to what the general flow of the atmosphere is like, specifically with jet streams, all right? This tells us as to where our strong wind shear can be. And you can see our jet stream here writhing on through portions of the United States. And whenever the jet stream dips down like this, this is what's called a trough. When it loops up, that is a ridge. At the ridges right here below a ridge, that is where a high pressure system is. And above a trough, that is where a low pressure system is. So low pressure systems typically create severe weather or any sort of weather for that matter. And you can see we have the beginning of a new trough that's starting to dip through into portions of California and the Southwestern United States. This is eventually going to continue to gain traction here in the time period of Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday next week. 
could potentially be an area to watch as our low pressure system now starts to spread that wind shear across much of the central and southern plains as well as into portions of the deep south here as we translate from Tuesday into Wednesday and finally into Thursday with wind shear even amplifying after that and a new low pressure system developing north of that continuing to aid into some more substantial shear across portions of the Ohio River Valley. So something to watch out here with this low pressure system or at least these two low pressure systems that we do have an ample amount of shear that is present out in front of the system which is suitable for some sort of severe weather. Now let's try and take a look at the lower levels of the atmosphere. Our low level jet or our 850 millibar wind shear which is about one kilometer above ground level. We see we have a little bit of a high pressure system over the Gulf of Mexico at this moment creating a lot of clockwise flow but that clockwise flow also creates a lot of shear out in front of the low pressure system that starts to actually move on through. And so when you see our low pressure system on the left hand side start to make landfall, you see our wind shear start to uptick here. Look at this wind shear in upwards of about 30 to 40 knots here, which is about 35 to 45 miles per hour, a one kilometer above ground level once again. So our low level jet's really starting to crank. And then our low level jet really starts to amplify here from Monday into Tuesday. And then from Tuesday into Wednesday, look at this, a lot more widespread, especially with our big low pressure system over here in the Northern Plains and the upper Midwest, as well as our big high pressure system over here in Florida, creating more and more flow to aid our low pressure system that's creating our counterclockwise flow over here. And so we've got a lot of convergence along this line here. And this is bringing a lot of moisture from the Gulf of Mexico into this general area. And you can see that moisture being pulled up from the wind shear here as this continues to move further and further north. Look at that, a huge warm sector that extends as far north as Iowa, Missouri, Kansas, even portions of Illinois as well. You can see dew points that are relatively modest and upwards of about 50 to 60 degrees. Uh, but the areas over here a little bit further south into some of these uh, actual pure yellows and even some oranges are the ones to really watch out for for severe weather. That is where you guys are more than likely going to actually anticipate it. And then as you can see here on Wednesday afternoon into Wednesday evening, the actual dew points become a lot more significant. A surface low pressure system starts to move on through here into portions of Oklahoma and Texas. So areas over here in Eastern Texas, as well as Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, I would watch out for some severe weather here on Wednesday, the 30th, and then the 31st, as this continues to move on through, you can see a new batch of warm moisture start to surge off into portions of the panhandle of Florida in towards Georgia, the Carolinas, as well as into portions of the mid-Atlantic. That'll create some strong gusty winds as well as potentially even some tornadoes possible as well this entire event here this entire span for the most part of just this severe weather threat has the potential of producing tornadoes here guys all right it does have the potential uh in regards to what the risks could be you know that's still to be determined at this time we're still going to give you more information and try and figure out what that could potentially be from the national weather service and storm prediction center but yeah that low level jet really cranks off you can see how significant it actually gets from Wednesday into Thursday, look at that, low-level jet amounts in upwards of around 60 to 70 knots, even in upwards of 77 knots at the bottom right-hand part of your screen there. So that's a heck of a low-level jet surging on through. That could definitely spell trouble for some severe weather possible around that general time frame. And if we were trying to find some convective available potential energy, which is the energy for thunderstorms to either form or sustain, we do have some of it here. We have some on Monday. This extends further in towards Tuesday. And you can see areas over here in Iowa. You guys have some energy over here. Not exactly the highest per se of convective available potential energy. You need about, it's, I'd say, 1,800 joules per kilogram to 1,500 joules per kilogram of CAPE in order for you to get consistent severe weather activity. But then as we translate over here towards Wednesday, look at that. You see a confined area of yellows and even oranges over here in eastern Texas, as well as portions of Louisiana in Arkansas. That does indicate you have a good enough amount of CAPE and upwards of over 2,000 joules per kilogram. So that could potentially be a severe weather risk day there. And then as this extends into Thursday, 
There is a band of Cape as well in the portions of Georgia. So that is something to watch out for. And even in the portions of the Carolinas as well. So that is definitely something to monitor. And well, let's use one final thing here, the instantaneous flash rate to try and determine as to whether or not uh, there could be lightning within some of these storms. And of course, lightning do come from thunderstorms and supercells and stuff like that. So this is a good idea to tell us what the timings are like and where thunderstorms could potentially be. So let's play it out here. Well, you can see there are some lightning strikes over here across portions of Nebraska and Kansas on Tuesday night. That'll continue to extend on further and extend really far south. You can see how that extends all the way down into portions of Texas. So potential severe weather event over there here on Tuesday, extending overnight into Wednesday morning. And then here we go, Wednesday afternoon into Wednesday evening. You can see how a lot of showers and thunderstorms are consolidated across much of eastern Texas as well as much of Louisiana and southern to western Mississippi. That'll continue to move off overnight and even into Thursday to where there can be some more severe weather activity across much of the eastern seaboard heading off into the Ohio River Valley as well. So definitely something to watch out for. We're going to continue to update you guys more and more as this continues to move on through. But from the severe weather department here, this does look like this could be the next event to move on through. The magnitude of this event, well... It's still to be completely determined. It looks like it could be uh, just based off of what's going on here, a slight to enhanced risk event. And uh, that's probably as far as I'm willing to go until this uh, gets a little bit closer. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications, share this with friends and family on social media. Also follow me on social media, link will be in the description down below. We're gonna continue to give you guys more and more information, go more and more in depth as we get closer and closer to this. So please be sure to stay tuned with the channel and I will catch you guys on Saturday night when I will upload my video next. So peace out everyone.